All right, guys, this is our Mindset Mondays. Today is 2-13-2023. Uh, our Mindset Mondays is a private discussion that we have inside the private channel every Monday for skill and mental development for day traders by day traders. All right. So uh, there's different guests that come on the, the program and then uh, there's different uh, skill development and mental development that we do uh, because we recognize in this discord that in this community that you, you can learn all the skills that you want, but if you don't have the mental side of this thing down packed, if you don't really get a grip on the mental side of things and you don't understand how to handle, how to manage your, the mental side of trading, then you, you cannot be successful in day trading. So we want to encourage you guys, um, for those of you guys who are inside the private channel, then you have access to the audios first. You get access to all of the Mindset Mondays, all of our uh, discussions first. So there's two types of uh, discussions that go to our Wealth Wells podcast. There's the Mindset Mondays, and then there's the Back Pocket Knowledge. These are just random drops of information to help you with the mental side of trading. We can touch on your view of money. We could touch on trading skill. We can touch on, you know, indicators. There, there's many things we discuss to help you, uh, you know, really look at the market in a way that uh, seasoned traders look at the market, view the market. And then on our Mindset Mondays, these are going to be a little more in-depth discussions and how-tos or um, you know best practices and things like that that we share amongst the group and with each other so that you can grow and get to the next level. So I'm going to encourage you uh, to find the YouTube channel, the Wealth Wells Podcast. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. All your It is currently and will continue to be ever-growing on all your podcast platforms. If you're inside the private uh, group then, then you know all of the drops are here first inside the audio trainings channel. And then ultimately they, they'll make it somewhere else, uh, you know, online, what have you. But um, if you want to gain access to audio trading, even the private audio trainings that we've got in here that aren't, aren't released, I drop them in here. How to setups, different things like that. We talk about uh, for, for, uh, for the killer well. So uh, our discussion today will center around trade management trade management, how to come out of everyday green. I thought it would be uh, nice to do this one today. We are live trading in the market. And as we trade today, um, we go, we're going to recap a little bit as we train through this. All right. So let's take a look at here's SPY today. You can see the market is live. We're moving. All right. And earlier today, there was a call out made to short at 411. Let me just around that 41108 area. So I'm going to snap a level there. <clears throat> 41108. 41108 is about right there. Give me a second. 411. I want to make sure I get it specific. All right, there it is. There. All right. So there was a call out to short this thing in this area here. All right. So um, and, and this is a great example of you're not going to win every trade. This is a great example of how to manage that, how to manage your drawdowns, all right? And I thought it'd be nice that we record it, uh, you know, so that you guys can, you know, can look back at this to understand, right? All right, so, you know, one of the most important things that you need to understand uh, when you're trading, no matter what, no matter what, what, where you trade, no matter what you do, is trade management. All right. Now, it's critical that you understand this because at some point as you trade, it is unrealistic to think that you're going to number one, win every trade or number two, it's unrealistic to think that you are going to um, not have to suffer drawdown. All right. Now, the only people that that's, don't suffer drawdown are individuals who uh, scalp minor profits throughout the day. And that's not the most effective way to trade in my book because your profits are so minor, one loss, one reversal, one big Shrek could come or, or a, a red candle, whatever the case is, it can come and eliminate those. So I, I teach traders to become a hybrid trader, right? To understand uh, you know, long holds and scalps all are appropriate depending on the day. Now I have a training that I will release later today. And that training is going to center on when to hold, when to scalp. All right, when to hold, when to scalp. So you can look at that later, but it ties together. But in this training here, we're talking about how to come out of everyday green, specifically trade management. All right, so let's just get right to it. 
The first thing you need to do for trade management, all right, this is really more of a, a how-to and training in this Mindset Mondays today. Uh, and I'll, I'll interweave the mental side of things in here, all right? But uh, for those of you guys who are viewing this live on YouTube or you're hearing this later on Spotify or on your podcast platform or inside of the private channel, then um, understand the logic behind it without being able to see my screen right now, but understand the logic behind it so that you can walk away profitable every day. Now, it's no secret. I am coming out of everyday green, whether it's small profits or large profits, all right? Doesn't matter. This trade here was a losing trade, right? Not a lot. Of, I didn't lose a lot on this trade. It's under 5%, but the trade is a losing trade because this is my entry zone here, specifically right here at that 4102. But my risk to reward was 4108. So, you know, if I don't get the inkling that we're going to blow back by this thing, I've got to get out, right? And so obviously cut that. But I'm going to discuss with you how you manage things like this so that you still come out green. The first thing you want to do is you have to pay attention to market sentiment. That's the first thing you got to do. So I'd like some market, I'd like some participation from you guys. Let's make this an interactive training, all right? Inside of the spy only options room. What's the context? What's the major driver for the week? Let's build this thing together right now, all right? Let's build it together right now. What's the driver for the week? So if the first step to, to trade management is understanding market sentiment, I'm sorry, is oh yeah, understanding market sentiment, we've got to identify what is the sentiment for the week, all right? Cool, all right. So here's a question, and this is a trick question. I'll tell you right now. You just answered that CPI is the driver for the week. So sentiment, we've got that check, right? CPI will drive the market sentiment this week. All right, that's a major um, uh, indicator, and it's going to govern uh, money flow. It's going to govern mar market participation. It's going to govern volume, a lot of things, right? All right. So the question is to you. What, what do you feel about that? Think if, if market sentiment is going to be dictated by CPI this week, what are you thinking already to yourself? What are you thinking? Anybody? What are you thinking? I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you guys to respond. We'll talk through this a little bit as I you know review the market with you. What are you thinking? All right. If, if market sentiment is dictated and pushed this week by CPI data, are you thinking to yourself, I'm going up, I'm going down? I want to know, what, what are you thinking? Bullish, bearish? All right. So so someone just said, uh, you know, I need to be cautious, manage, manage risk. I like it. Uh, another person says, hands off. Another person says, less risk. Another, another person says, if CPI is good, go up. Okay, looks like you're, you're developing some uh, if-then statements. Another person says, choppy, choppy. All right, all right, all right. So you know what I say to myself when, when I see this? I don't have a bull or a bear thesis, any of that stuff. When I know that CPI is coming, you know what the major driver I'm going to be looking at is? And you know the answer to this, guys. This is what's going to tell me if the moves are sustained. So after, so when it comes to trade management, after I understand market sentiment, the second thing I'm going to focus on is volume. Let's talk about what specifically I'm going to look at, all right? All right, so, so a lot of people, and this is no secret, you know, a lot of people have read the book by Anna Coling, Volume Price Analysis, right? And they, and they understand that, which is not a secret. Understanding volume is not a secret. And I'll really put some nice context to it. I'm going to take it a step further and help you understand even more so in relation to price action, how this, how this, you know, works for my style of trading and my system VVP. All right. Let me show you something at the volume here. All right. And this, you may or may not get this inside of uh, the book or not. We could even go back to Friday. I'm going to go back to Friday for a minute. Perfect. This is a great example. All right. Now look at the similarities between Friday and today. All right. So first of all, Friday, uh, where's Friday? Friday's behavior, range bound, chippy, chippy, chippy. You agree, everyone? Yes, I'm trying to get, uh, let's, let's hide this for a second here so you can, 
All right, range bound and chippy. All right, I want you to pay attention to the first half hour or we'll say hour, 45 minutes or so, okay? Now, I need your response here. So you look, we're looking at uh, February 10th, 2023. And we're looking at the morning session to about that 1030 time frame. That's what we're looking at, to about that 1030. What anomaly do you notice regarding volume? What are you, what do you look, what do you notice? Now, again, we're live trading. I'm pausing my trading. We're doing the, I'll show you my profits for the day. That's no problem. You guys see that in the private channel, right? In all fairness, I want to short the market right now. And any, if this was any other day, I would be in a, a put and I would pair it with, with uh, some futures and short that. All right. So what are you noticing? I need, I need your feedback. What are you know? If you're looking at this for the first time, if you're looking at this on YouTube, you can pause the video or whatever. This is a training. Analyze the volume. Analyze it. What are you looking at? What does this tell you about the morning? Okay, someone says decreasing volume, dropping off. All right, very nice. But, but what I'm looking for is, do you see how we're getting spikes in volume? Spikes in volume. Do you see that? If you see it, say, I see it. If you see it, I'll put you over here. Or yes, it's fine. I see it. I see it. Everybody, come on. All right. You see spikes in volume. All right. When you see spikes in volume like this, I'm going to give you a diamond here. I'm going to give you a gem. When you see spikes in volume right here, yet the stock is range bound. What does that tell you about the day or at the very least the morning session, the morning trading session? What does that tell you? Spike drop off, 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 spike drop off. Do you see it? What does that tell you? Someone says big money is risk off in waves. Yes, yes. You know what it tells me? It tells me that we are not moving out of this area because we need sustained volume to move. And I use that in combination with my candlesticks and price action that I train in our trading and our training. So this part right here that I'm teaching you is in this training right. Uh, we go in a deep dive in volume, which is going to be right here in advanced strategies where we talk about the tape and then we talk about volume levels. But let's get back to it. All right. So when I start to see this behavior, I say to myself, all right, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere today. And half of that is because I've already taken into context market sentiment from the day before. I know what the week is looking like. I know where volume, uh, where market participation is after an aggressive move like this. I start to watch the volume and spike drop off, spike drop off, spike drop off. We're not going anywhere. And so if we get aggressive spikes in volume, boom, 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 we should move more aggressively than the, the little point and a half, two points that we see here. But we don't have any sustained volume. One way or the other. See, buyers, buyers, sellers, sellers, sellers. Buyers, buyers, sellers, sellers. You know what this also tells me when I see this type of anomaly? these types of behaviors, this tells me that there is more mechanical or algo buying than actual human participants, actual trades being executed. Because humans cannot make patterns like this in the market. They can't go buy, buy, sell, 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 buy, buy, sell, 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 buy, buy, sell, sell. They can't do that. We don't, everyone in the market would have to agree. Now that's just, now, now, now listen to me. That's just an indicator. That's not law. There's a number of things I'm looking at when I watch volume to see if it's real market participation or if it's algos, right? Same with today. Let's go to today. Today is 2.13. This is Monday off of the Friday. How about we go look at the volume the same? What do we have? Spike, spike, done. Spike, done. Spike, done, done. Spike, spike, done. The market is creeping, but this is not sustained. This is, this is not something that I can necessarily trust. This tells me that the majority of this buying is algo, is, is mechanical buying. It's not actual people. So then I take my volume and I compare it to the previous day's volume. Look at the volume. Look at how minuscule it is. Compare, and we ranged Friday. We didn't even go anywhere, really. But look at how much participation we had here as opposed to how much participation we have here, yet we're moving. Do you see that? So does it mean you can't trade it? It does not. But it does mean when you see this type of behavior, 
you are susceptible to a little more fake outs because the 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 actual participation isn't there. This is more mechanical buying. That's me. That's VVP. That's KD. And that, that has served me very, very well. So if you notice, I didn't play a whole lot of run-ups today, right? Short, 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 one little run-up, short, short. And then I get trapped in a run, in a, in a uh, short here. No problem. Let's take a look at it, all right? So we're talking about trade management in this training, okay? And we're talking about some things that I govern in order to manage my trades, some things that I watch. I know what the sentiment is. I'm watching the volume. The volume tells me this is not strong enough for me to rock it so far past my entry where at the very least, I won't come back to it. So has this ever happened to you? Have you ever gotten into a position? All right, so you get in this position right here, okay? This happens to people, this happens, all right? There's, you guys see when I win and when I lose, okay? So let me see, you get into a position, boom. And then you sit through some chop and then the position, the trade changes and a rush of volume comes in and either cooks you because you're watching your p &L, or you think it's cooking you. Has that ever happened to you? I need to know. Anybody where you get into a position and then it gets reversed on or something and you're like, oh man, what do I need to do? Give me some feedback in the spy only options room if that's happened to you. All right. It's happened to everybody. It's happened to everybody. You get into a trade, something goes wrong. It is what it is. It happens. It happens. Where does the trade management part come in? The trade management is why this is why we're talking about on the mindset Mondays because this is a mental side of trading. You need to have the wherewithal to say and answer the number one question. The number one question when you enter a trade and as the trade continues, what is that question? What is the number one question you should be asking yourself, folks? Where are we going? Where is this stock going? All right. That's the question. So after, after I assess volume and I'm in the trade and the trade has reversed on me or something to that effect, even when it's profitable, even when it's profitable, where am I going? Now, here's some bonus. All right. Here's some bonus uh, tips to you. In asking myself, where are we going? You know what I also ask myself? I ask myself two things, all right? I ask myself, all right, this trade has reversed, but I don't believe it because I don't believe we have this, the most aggressive volume where I, I'm gonna leave my entry so aggressively and it won't give me an opportunity at the very least to get out of my trade at a break even or minimal loss. You don't want to exit your trades based on emotions and get, you know, you're down 20% when you can only have taken a three or four or 5% loss. If you're hearing me say, I heard that. If you're watching this <laughs> later, say, I heard it. Don't worry, nobody's going to judge you. You can talk to the screen and you can talk to the monitor. <laughs> All right, you heard me. All right, good. Making sure, look, everybody's participating. You heard, you heard, you heard, good. Do not, and I put a video together on this, a trader either has a, a tight stop loss, which is not an emotional exit, or they have a risk to reward area, which is not an emotional exit. Either way, they're saying to themselves, you know what? I, I have a reason to hold this thing because I do believe I'm going to get some weakness. And you guys heard me say that. Did you, did you, did you or did you not say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this? I believe we come back to the four 11 area. Keep me honest. Make sure you heard it. All right, folks. Yep. Yes. Excellent. All right. So I'm looking quite frankly for a breakdown past it because ultimately I felt like we were going to come back to this 410, uh, 50 area, right? I felt like we, we would, but as we come back into this area, all right, it is holding. I've got to exit at a loss. However, that doesn't mean you don't trade, right? How do you ensure that you come out the day green? Well, the, the, the fourth thing, or let's continue with the third. So I'm going to talk about TITT2T, time in trade. How long am I willing to hold? How long before this trade 
gets to its destination, come back here. Time in trade, you need to be tracking that metric. You need to be tracking that metric. Now, this is why you can't just go and get a blank piece of paper. You don't know what to track, period. This is why I have traders go here and get the 90 day day trading journal. I have specific metrics that I track. Anybody that tells you otherwise, they're just a hater. Anybody that tells you otherwise, they're just hating. All right. I have specific metrics that I track and more as we release the second edition, you will see. And anyone who's in the private channel know that we've done personal and private exercises. We've done skill-based exercises. We've done strength and rewards exercises, all kinds of things to improve our trading. And we have gotten results in that. So one metric, I'm going to give it to you now, is I track time and trade. I know how long I am in my trades, and I know how long I'm willing to hold this before this thing gets to my target and or comes back. The second, I track time to target. Time in my trade, how long am I willing to hold this? How long do I think this trade is going to take before it hits its target, here or here, right? These will help you calm yourself and really manage the trade. Let's recap. Market sentiment. I know this week is going to be a CPI. Just go look at the past data. Look at the days prior to CPI and just think from big money standpoint, right? Think about this thing and say to yourself, you know, I wonder, I wonder what, you know, what the sentiment of the market makers is going to be. I wonder kind of how they're going to uh, handle this this day, right? Now, if you do that, if you understand that, then you're going to understand the number one. This is for everybody. What is the number one rule before you even get into the market, before you do anything, before you even think about a trade? What's the number one rule I teach in training? Everyone. And we'll see. And other, more folks said, yes, I called that out. Great. FBM, FBM, FBM. Yes, that means follow big money. So if you were big money, massive hedge funds, would you risk massive amounts of money prior to the most important market moving data of that uh, week or of that quarter of that month? Would you risk a lot? Yes or no? Would you risk a lot? Yes or no? Everyone said no. You're already sharper than what you think. Everyone said no. So let's just think this thing through. If you wouldn't risk a lot, you know Wall Street's not going to risk a lot. Doesn't that mean that your risk to reward should be, or your risk should be lower today? Trade management, right? Right? Oops, sorry about that. I'm always fat fingering, so, you know, it is what it is, guys. All right. So the next thing for trade management, there's nothing better than having a smaller trade being in the red than a larger trade being in the red. Would you agree? Would you agree? Would you agree? Would you like to see $100 down or $10,000 down? <laughs> right? It makes sense. It makes sense. And when you see $100 down or $500 down or something smaller, that, that gives you clarity. Say, you know what? I'm really not down that much. Let me just focus, right? So what does this low risk mean? What? It means low. We'll just put it like this. Low contract size. And it's going to mean proper DTE, okay? I can't overstate this one enough, all right? I'll just keep this short because I don't want to put a whole lot on the screen here. All right. So low contract count. All right. I'm not going to load up on a day like today. I'm not grabbing 100. I'm not grabbing 200. I'm not grabbing 50. Right. Low contract count. And I'm going to have DTE appropriate to right the day. Right. Appropriate to the timidity in the market. So that's going to mean I'm going to absolutely have a three to five DTE. But what else does that mean, everyone? What else does it mean? And this is huge. This is huge. I talk about this over and over in our Discord. I'm going to apply what, guys? You see it there on your screen. Come on. Let me hear somebody say it. You know it's there. And we talk about it ad nauseum. We talk about it ad nauseum. We, we, we've, we discussed it so much. And the DAC is broken down in the Discord right there. What is DAC? Divide and conquer. So 
let's just let's just talk about this, okay? Let's just recap what I've got so far. Why I'm able to trade calmly, have a good time while I'm trading, right? All that cool stuff. I, I got market sentiment on the mind. We do our weekly prep every Sunday, right? We didn't do it the other day because because of the Super Bowl, right? We're balanced. Spend some time with your family, okay? With that in mind, volume is the driver. Every time, every day, no matter what. When I'm in a trade and the trade may go against me or it's not moving at the pace I want. Has that ever happened to you? You get into a trade and it's like chip, 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 and you start to get nervous. Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth. Come on, it's just us talking. You get, you're like, oh, I don't know if it's going to break. Has come on. No, nah, I know more than one person that's happened to you guys. Oh, everybody's lying this morning, huh? Okay, all right, whatever, whatever. All right. That's happened to you. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, you know what? What's going to help you? Where are we going? Time in the trade, time to target. Time in the trade, time to target. Time in the trade, time to target. What's my time in this trade? Okay, how long have I been in this trade? How long does it typically take me to get to my profits, get to my position? All these things, right? Now, if you want to do a deep dive on this, if you really want to understand what I'm talking about, go into the video channel, all right? Go into the video channel. I'm going to try to find this thing. And I want you to watch this video. I'm saying watch it over and over and over and over again. The video is right there. This is gold, guys. It's gold. It's gold. I'm telling you. If I'm not, has anybody put some feedback in the chat? If you've watched this video, day trading spy options to win mindset, what to think about while in a trade, step by step. And I give more of this in my trainings. I give more of this in one on ones. I give it all. Has this video helped you? Anybody watch that video? Has it helped you out? I mean, the thing, okay, someone said 10 times it's platinum. This is, I'm telling you. I am, you, it's very rare and you've heard me do it live throughout the day. Let's, let's find out, right? Let's go to, I can't make this stuff up. Let's go to uh, testimonials. I think somebody left a nice testimony. I'm going to, I'm going to review it. I commented on it a couple of times right here. Our, the, our trees heard me reading the tape, reading the tape throughout the day. And she got it. Now, now I'm going to say she's been using it on Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you, but she, she's used on spy too. But even cheating on spy with Tesla. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> but but the idea here is all right, where are we going? Time and trade, time to trade. All right. So you can watch those videos. Then on a day like today, low risk. What does low risk mean? It means low contract count. All right. Low contract count. Okay. And it means proper DTE, buying yourself time, and you're going to use the DAC. You're going to use the DAC. That's what you're going to do. All right. These are four things that helps me manage the trade. Now, here's the golden nugget. You need to have the wherewithal to understand when the trade is going to be profitable and when the trade is just going to break even. You need to have the wherewithal. In this case, if I get an indication that I'm not going to break down here, I'm going to take my small loss and be done with it. So let's do it together. Anyone who's been through training, type it in the chat. Anyone who's been through training, we're going to zoom in here. I'm on the three minute, right? Go to five. Even better, even better. Hint, hint, hint. Do you see anything here that tells me you probably aren't going to break down? Take it right here. Do you see anything? Exactly. Yes. Yes. We see the price action reflected in the candlestick. You want to learn how to read that. You go and take zero and one combined. It's like Novocaine. It works every time. Just give it time. Just give it time. All right. So that tells me, all right, this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to take my loss. No problem. But what am I doing as I clearly stated in between? Am I just sitting on my thumbs like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to take a loss on this trade. What am I doing? What did I do as I specifically said to you guys and then post it in the Discord? What did I do during this time? Anybody? There you go, John. Shorted the futures. Let's go over there. Take a look at my trades. Boom. There's my three trades. All right. So with well, two trades, I trailed the second one there. So we scalped the first one here from 4135 down to that 4132. Boom. Just quick scalps. Boom, boom. Then we go ahead and scalp the second trade, and we long hold to get a little bit more there. So we're not talking about, you know, groundbreaking profits, right? 
but that's enough to keep you green and make you green to absorb the loss and move on past it. You understand that, guys? If you heard me, if you got it, everybody say, I got it. Excellent. Does it make sense to you guys? Does it make sense? All right. Excellent. Excellent. There are many other strategies I have. Many other strategies, guys. If you think that I only trade naked options with the antenna coming out green every day, that's fine. But there are some days you just get jammed up and you need to be able to work yourself out the trade. This is an example where I'm not jammed up, but this has provided a great learning example where I can say, you know what, let me teach everyone how, because people won't believe you. Uh, you, you guys, now, is there anyone in the Discord that's been on a tear? Let's see, if, if you've been green, you know, weekly, we won't even say daily, because at this point, you know, you're going to take a loss here and there, but have you had some green weeks? Who's, who's been green the last, we'll say, two weeks straight? Anybody in the Discord? Put a green dot in the Discord if you've been green two weeks straight. Two weeks straight. Or more, or more, or more. So we got Quell, three weeks. P Money, two point. Uh, P Money, two point. P Money's been green at least two weeks. Anybody else green? Multiple weeks. Now I'll take it a step further. Anybody green for the month? Almost two. I like it. Green for the month. Green for the month. Green, green. All right. All right. Green for the month. So you may have a red day. You may even have a little red week. Green for the month. Feb. Anybody green for January? Anybody green for January? So the idea here is for you to pay attention to the macros and to govern this thing. So even in the beginning, if you don't come out, you can see folks participate. Even in the beginning, if you don't come out green every day, you will come out green weekly and certainly can come out green monthly. But you're going to have to pay attention to your trades at a macro and micro level. How do I manage my trades? This is how I manage them. All right. I'm going to wrap this up. This is how I apply trade management. All right. This is just a training here. How to come out of everyday green. We're talking trade management. Here are the four things that I do. Market sentiment. What is it? I take it into context. What's going on that week, et cetera. And we discuss all that in, in our market prep. Volume will be my driver. I'm watching the volume. I'm looking for the things. I know the little anomalies. There's other books you can read and you can, you can get my information. That's fine as well. I have things coming out for volume that I'm going to help you with. That'll be released in 2023, 2024 uh, to put some real actionable context and to say, hey, when I see this, take a trade. It'll essentially just be my setups and you'll see it. Then, all right, I'm in a trade, whether it's going for or against me. Time in trade, time to target. What is my time in trade? You can only track that or know that if you've been tracking it, then low risk. All right. I don't have a lot in these trades anyway. So that calms me and allows me to say, you know what? Let me just manage this thing and trade properly. Right. And then after that, the fifth piece to the puzzle. I just still trade the best setup. In my case, I can trade the futures. Or you grab another options position. All right. That's all you do. That's all you do. You don't don't cut it. Don't cut it until it hits your area, but go ahead and short it up here. It'll it'll work itself out and this loss will be washed out. Then you just trade because you're trading target to target. That's what you do. All right. That's what you do. This thing is coming around, chipping. All right. This trade is done. You know you're going to get out here, put your Exit right there, put your, your take profit right there, you're done. But when you see the weakness, short it. You have to trade. You can't be shell-shocked and say, oh, I don't know where we're going. Look, this thing, every trade is not going to work out immediately. Every trade is not going to go into your favor. Every trade is not going to be a winning trade. But you can turn every day into a green day. You can turn every week. You can turn every month. You have to dial in if you got it, if that's clear. If it was helpful, everybody say yes. All right, I'll take some questions now. That's our Mindset Mondays. We've discussed it. We've um, 
you know, give, giving you the five steps that I take to come out of the day green to manage a trade. All right. Market sentiment, volume, where are we going? Time in trade, time to target, low risk, low contract count. The DTE is going to be appropriate three to five days. And I'm using DAC every time, baby. And then I still trade the best setup. I don't care about that. I'm, I'm looking for the best setup. I am a trader. I am a day trader. I'm not a swing trader masquerading as a day trader. Right, I'm not something else. No, we day trade. And so the day trader looks for the opportunity throughout the day. And he or she picks their spots. They take the trade to their target, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. All right. Are there any questions on this before we wrap up? Give you guys a couple moments here. I see someone typing. So I want to make sure I answer the question here. This was this was more. <clears throat> this was more of a uh, of a skill based mindset Mondays. All right, it's more of a skill based. Now the mental side of this thing is this. All right, the mental side is you're gonna have to keep your wits about you. You're gonna have to keep your wits about you and understand what the sentiment is. I mean, look at this. This doesn't look. We're chipping up, but does that look aggressive to you? It doesn't. It, it looks stringy. It looks, you know, mechanical to me personally. It looks mechanical to me personally. All right, but you know, we're still chipping. But it, it, there's nothing here that tells me that there's an overwhelming amount of market sentiment to rock it. At least not yet. Therefore, when I see that behavior and you get into a trade and it doesn't break immediately, then you can use these five steps and you can use your wits to say, you know what, I, I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to just kind of watch this one. Now, I'm not telling you to hold it past your areas, right? Areas of interest, your risk to reward levels. You should have targets. I am out at this target, my risk to reward area. I'm out, right? So whether you take it here on the break and, and, you're, and it hits your risk to reward or whether you wait till it comes back to your entry, both are acceptable because you stuck to your trading plan. That is what makes a good trader. It is not how many trades you win. It's not. The winning trades, the money is the byproduct of proper trade execution, all right? Now, listen carefully. If you hear some other jabronis using my statements, then you'll know it came from me. It's the byproduct of it, all right? You can look at all of my old videos, go back a year, and listen to what I've said all this time. Look at the dates. Look at the times. I've never changed my story. I've never changed what I'm trading. I've never changed my approach. I've never changed my, my, my strategy. It will never change. It is superior to every trading strategy out there. VVP is the way, period. If you want to layer something or try to find your edge and do something, else, that's up to you. But this is, the, this is tops. This is the big dog. All right. How can you tell this volume is low relative to the previous day's volume? Using a volume average. That's what you do. Chon, you use a volume average. And so in the Discord, we use a volume indicator called the Better Volume Average, developed by uh, Sonny, who's one of the Wealth Wells, and we use that one. It has an average indicator in there, and, and it can uh, tell you uh, average volume, right? Additionally, what you do is you get training, and you go through the training to understand, okay? This is the most complex environment, guys. You, whether you take training from me or someone else is fine. doesn't matter. But just get the training, right? Hopefully, the training that you get from someone else is valuable, right? I've gotten rave reviews from the training. Yeah, there may be one jabroni here and there who doesn't see it. The value, that's fine. They go on off and they, you know, take their L's and they come back. But this is where it's going to come at, all right? This is where it's going to go. We're trading live. It's it's nearly one o'clock. I want to get back to the market. But I just want to do that that mindset Mondays for you guys to help you understand how to manage your trade. It is possible, even when you take a loss to crush this thing, all right? You saw some of my profits for the day. I'll likely end the day in the same range that I normally end the day at, right? This is this is typically, I, I you know, I'm not, this is typically where I'm at, right? This is typically for the morning session. I'm, I'm this is typically where I'm at. If I'm, if I'm coming out the day on a good day, that's typically, even better, it'll be a six figures. But this is typically, and this is why you guys can see the, 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 the snapshots there, right? And that's not even the, the 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 options trades, right? That's including losses, everything in there, right? So that's not include that's not even the options trades there. So uh, I just I just make sure I'm dialed in and I hit these five points here. Absolutely. So 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 striking edge is eagle. Sorry, is asking, do you ever have a hard stop on your option? Absolutely. When you hear me say tight stop, 
That's a hard stop. I feel like it wicks you up because your stop is too tight, right? When I say I have a tight stop at this area, this, 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 that's a, that's a hard stop. If I tell you I'm still in the trade or I'm trailing and I'm in around this area, or what have you, then my stop is not so tight. Now today you, you don't want to mess around. You don't have the, unless you're on the right side of the trade, you don't have, I mean, the contracts aren't even moving that aggressively. So your risk reward should be low today, but we'll take this area for example, right? You see these, these wicks here, you, these stringy, the stringy action. All right, so if, you, if you're trying to play a breakout right here, right? Let's say you're trying to play a break. And beautiful example of a very nice trade here that you know I did not take, should have taken, but I didn't take it. Just this break right here, based on this price action, this candle, anyone who's been through training should have seen that from across the street. You can see it, right? You can see it. Because it's low volume and some context of CPI, I did not take this trade, but this the setup is there. So let's say you take the trade to go to the upside here, right? And you enter right at this, uh, we'll say 409.20 area, right? We'll say, or we'll say right here, 409.14, all right? And you're like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hold here. I got indication we're gonna hold and go to the upside. And this is where I'm gonna put my stop at. Well, why would you put your stop here when you know that the volume is poppy, chippy, up, down? What do we say about this? We, we said, okay, this is gonna represent some mechanical participation. This is not necessarily gonna, you know, represent that the market is ready to go. I mean, this thing is gapping around here, right? There, there, no, 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 no. I don't trust it. So if you believe we're going to get up here, you're going to have to, number one, give yourself proper time and trade proper time to your target. And you're also going to need to understand why you've entered in this area and give yourself time for the trade to work itself out. So you're, you're not in the killer well, so you don't understand that we've got levels down here. And I use my risk to reward uh, areas in relation to my levels. So my stop loss would likely be down here. My stop loss at the very, uh, at the most, or least should I say, it would be here, right? Here or here. That's where I would, that's what I have my stop. So what you're finding is, is that likely your, your stop loss is too close to your entry or your stop loss is in obvious areas where the market maker can grab you. There are obvious areas on your screen and throughout the day where it, the market makers are just going to grab you. They're not going to hold in that area, but they're going to grab you. Obvious areas where it's like, mm, I probably shouldn't have my stop there. My stop probably should be here, right? Obvious areas where the market maker is going to get. So you look for those obvious areas as well, and you make sure you get a good entry. Part of you know trading in the beginning and just in general, it, you got to have a good entry. Because most people, all of us, we like to see our targets, our, 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 our positions going to profit immediately, right? The only way to do that is to make sure you got a good entry or good risk to reward. And you follow these, you follow these steps because it's going to, it's going to dance. Sometimes you need to understand market sentiment. It's going to chip around. You need to understand volume. It, it may take you a minute to get to your target. You need, you need to understand where we're going time in trade time to target. You need to make sure you have the, you, you're not over leveraged, right? You don't have a, so much on there where you're just like, oh, I'm going to just, this is going to lose my house if I lose, right? So your low contract or your contract count, your DTE, and D, you, you're using a DAC. You need to make sure that you still trade the best setup. One of the, one thing that happens with a lot of new traders is they miss good trades trying to manage a poor one or a loser. Has it ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to you? You miss a good trade because you're caught in a loser or you're trying to manage something that just, you because you didn't get a, get a good entry. Just letting you, all right, yeah, yeah, it's happened. Right? So, so listen, listen, number five, if you use four and five, it's going to, it's, these two are game changers by themselves, four and five, game changers by themselves. If you have a proper size and you keep trading, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I think what you're thinking about is you don't want to give any money back on that trade. And that gets you in trouble. That gets you in trouble, doesn't it? When you say to yourself, I don't, I don't want to give any money back on this one trade, that gets you in trouble because you end up giving more back than what you should. You know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You know I'm telling the truth. And you're so, and, and you forget to just trade the day. Just trade it. Just trade the day. So everyone listening for the first time, this is what the killer wells get every single day and every single week. We do trade breakdowns. There's ad hoc training. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I enjoy doing it. I don't mind doing it so long as it does not affect my trading 
It's not affecting my profits. I'm going to always do this. The minute, the second the discord or something starts to affect that, I'm going to shut it down. We'll be done. You guys, you know, those who've got the goods, they've got the goods and we'll, 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 we'll bid you farewell. But I don't mind doing this, right? I'm actively missing a short up here. It's not a bad day to miss trades. But uh, you can clearly see, as I stated a million times, these run-ups are not sustainable, okay? Have I, have I not said that this, this, this activity is not sustainable today? So I'm just going to hang around here and we'll see where this thing goes. And you're absolutely right, LSG. Then you miss the next move and two plus more, right? More money in the current trade. You're trying to cut that thing. Have your hard stop. And in the meantime, trade. Look at it. Look at it roll. Look at it roll. Take a look around the market. Oh, yeah, you got to break down. Take a look around. So you saw me short this earlier. I would have still shorted this one here today. Certainly would have shorted. I mean, obviously, right? But uh, we're, we're, we're talking. So it's a direct short there. But um, hopefully some of you guys are taking this, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave you guys. It's been an awesome time to talk with you this morning. I'm not going to draw this thing out. We've talked about trade management, how to come out of everyday green. It's possible. This is how you do it. You got to manage your trade. Market sentiment, read the volume, know where we're going, time in trade, time to target. Low risk, contract count, low contract count. DTE, three to five, DAC, use the DAC, and then still take the best setup. Trade, folks, whether you're trading futures or more options, it doesn't matter. Trade this thing, and you're going to come out the day green. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to encourage you, wherever um, you listen to this app, I'm going to encourage you to you know like and subscribe, all that cool stuff. But I want you to find us on YouTube, Wealth Wells Podcast, on Spotify, Wealth Wells, where we do the Mindset Mondays and back pocket knowledge to give you the development that you need to crush this thing every single day. Let's get back to trading, folks. I'll see you at the top. KD signing out.